Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 18 to 23 in section 3 of the Purple Booklet. This is a question about benzene and the different structures and isomers you can have. Question 18 says, consider structures 2 and 3. How many different monosubstituted isomers can be produced from them? Let's look at structure 2 first. I'm going to put a dot on each of the carbon atoms whose hydrogen could be replaced. In theory, it could be any of the hydrogen atoms. As you can see, there's a line of symmetry that runs along the molecule like this, meaning that if you were to replace this carbon's hydrogen and this one, it would essentially be the same isomer. And that's true for this one and this pair. That means if we get rid of this line, we only have three options um, for different isomers in structure two. So what about structure three? Well, each of the carbon atoms is essentially the same in this one. They're each attached directly to three other carbons and one hydrogen, which could be replaced. And it doesn't matter which hydrogen we replace because all the carbon atoms are the same. So that means there's only going to be one isomer because no matter which one we look at, it will always be the same isomer that's produced. So that means that there's three for structure two and one for structure three, meaning that the answer to number 18 is C. Let's have a look at number 19. How many different disubstituted isomers can be produced from structure one? Well, this is where I'm going to start drawing lines. If we read the stem, we can see that they talk about how a carbon can either have double bonds or single bonds in this case. So let's look at it from the perspective of the carbons with a single bond. I'm going to draw a line between two of the carbons here. What that means is that we're replacing the carbon, the hydrogen on this atom and on this one. We could also draw this line and that would produce a new structure if we replace this hydrogen and this hydrogen. The third option would be if we replaced both of the hydrogens on these two carbons. What if we look at it from the perspective of one of the carbons that has a double bond? Let's choose this one. We could replace these two hydrogens these two hydrogens and these two hydrogens. So we know that there's going to be six different isomers you can make from structure one by dye substitution. Therefore, the answer for number 19 is D. Number 20 says, if it was found that just one monosubstituted isomer and just two dye substituted isomers could be prepared from benzene, this would be consistent with benzene having which structure? Okay, so we know from the previous answers that just one monosubstituted isomer can narrow it down to one, three, or four. And just two disubstituted isomers means that we can rule out number one. So that means the answer is either going to be three or four, or both. So let's try and decide between answer C and D by looking at structure three and seeing how many disubstituted isomers could be prepared from this. Again, this is where we'd want to start drawing our lines so we can see all the different possibilities. From this carbon, we could replace these two hydrogens, these two hydrogens, these two, and these two. So that means there's four disubstituted isomers from structure three meaning the answer for number 20 is structure four only, which is answer C. Let's look at number 21 then. It says, consider these four tri-substituted isomers of structure three with the formula given. It says, which of the following is correct? So it talks about the equivalency of isomers and what that means is basically they're the same molecule, but just rotated. Now, some people are really good at this and they can just see and look at it. Um, and see straight away that five and six are equivalent because if you rotated one, you'd get the other. But the way I like to think of it, and I'm not too good at looking at these, so the way I think of it is if you just draw out the carbons that you're interested in that have um, substituted groups, you get a shape that looks a bit like this. It's a complicated structure, let's get rid of everything else. So this is structure five. If we drew out structure six, let's see if it looks any different. Now the angles, might be different, but you can see that actually these are essentially the same thing. 
It's just a slightly different shape, the way I've drawn it, but you could change it and it would look the same. So these are equivalent. What about structure seven? Well, if you drew out just the carbons that have um, an attached grip, you wouldn't get a straight line. You have to have this connecting carbon in the middle, which means you can see clearly that these aren't equivalent. So five and six are equivalent, six and seven are not. But what about number eight? Well, let's draw out the same thing again. I'll just get rid of this carbon because we don't need it. We've got a carbon here that has a substituted grip. And we've got another one down here that has a substituted grip. And you can see that structure eight, structure six and structure five are essentially the same shape, whereas structure seven is different. Going back to what the question is, which is the following is correct, this shows that the answer for this one is going to be B, because structures 5, 6 and 8 are equivalent, but 7 is different. Number 22 asks, how many different tri-substituted isomers can be produced from structure 4? Well, if we simplify this and just draw a line, and that means all the carbons, we have to put 3 different groups onto this. I'm just going to draw that as x. We could put them all on one end like this and leave the other end just with hydrogens, which I'll leave off. Or we could put one on one end and two on the other. Equally, we could flip it around and do two on one end and one on the other. But these two are the same. So that means there's only going to be two different isomers of four for a tri-substituted molecule. So that means that the answer for number 22 is B. And finally, for number 23, Stereoisomers are molecules that are mirror images of each other, but cannot be superimposed. Consider disubstituted molecules of 2 and 3. Stereoisomers would be possible for which? So stereoisomers are like your hands, you know, they're the same shape, but they're facing the other way. For something to be a stereoisomer, you need something called a chiral carbon, which is a carbon atom that has four different groups attached, like this. So we were going to have a look now at structures two and three to see if any of the carbons there have four different groups attached. So we looked earlier on at a simplified um, grip here, which is where each carbon is just connected to other things. So you've got four possibilities for each of these carbons. So these carbons in theory could be chiral. If, for example, you substituted a hydrogen on this one or on this one, you could end up with four different groups here. But here you can see that each carbon is only bonded to three other atoms because there's always got to be these double bonds. There's no carbon that has four different groups attached and so it could not have a chiral carbon, so it can't have any stereoisomers. So that tells you that structure three could have stereoisomers, but structure two can't, meaning that the answer for number 23 is also B. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.